Hello. One of the things I love about Only Connect is that viewers often make up and send in their own questions, and I've been meaning to give some feedback. So before the series ends, I would like to say to a few people, thank you for sending your questions in. Melanie from Rygate, lovely question, but just make sure if it's a sequence that there's a clear progression to the clues. Alison from Carlisle, thanks for your, your question, but we do like to have at least two sources to verify each fact. And uh, Ray from Telford, Please stop sending me those sorts of questions. <coughs> Joining me for tonight's semi-final are, on my right, Frankie Fanko, a keen walker who at five hours old was the youngest ever member of Lancashire County Cricket Club. Andrew Beasley, a football writer who has fostered a dozen dogs. And their captain, Andrew Fanko, a modern languages graduate who was once put to bed by a prominent botanist. United by a devotion to Daniel Craig, they are the 007s. Well done for making the semi-finals. Are you, you feeling the pressure or do you feel more relaxed the better you do? Um, it's a bit of both, really. I think we are feeling the pressure as it gets closer to the final, but because we've done this uh, a few times before, I guess we're used to how it all works. And, um, yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. The horror will begin again imminently once we have met your opponents on my left. Bob Wollstenholme, a former wine salesman who has more hats than shoes. Katie McCorkindale, an acupuncturist who walks 25,000 steps a day. And their captain, Yasha Elliott, a grants manager who spent a day rolling a tin of beans across a stage. All champion cheese eaters, they are the Churophiles. How are you feeling about the approaching semi-final? Uh, I think quite relaxed because we didn't expect to be in it, so we're kind of free rolling from here. Let the free roll commence! <laughs> 007s, you won the toss, you've chosen to go first. So please choose your opening hieroglyph. Lion, please. Lion. What is the connection between these apparently random clues? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Next, please. That was in Ghostbusters 2, if that makes any difference. Okay. So it's not state. Yeah, yeah, uh, next, please. Three seconds. Um, these things all happened to the same actor in films in these years. Not it, I'm afraid. Churafiles, would you like to have a go for a bonus point? It's the Statue of Liberty. It's things that happen to the Statue of Liberty. What films are so we talking about? The last one is Planet of the Apes. That's right. And then... This Ghost is Ghostbusters. It has to be Ghostbusters 2. It's Ghostbusters 2, exactly. The, the Statue of Liberty yeah. comes to life, yes. Decapitated. Is that Godzilla in uh, 2000? It's Cloverfield. Oh, it also oh, happens in so. Deep Impact, actually. And but, then uh, that's an X-Men film. X -Men the original X-Men. Is it X-Men? Yeah. And who plays Magneto? Oh, Ian McKellen. McKellen. It's Ian McKellen, and he uses his superpowers to manipulate and bend the Statue of Liberty. Well done, you get a bonus point, and which question would you like? Uh, may we have water, please? Yes, you may. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. <laughs> Next, please. something to do with a triangle, but... Uh, Next, please. E is just E, but that's not going to help. Anything, so. I'm going to get the next one. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, sure. uh, next, please. So that means that E, what's the thing? Is that so pi? And what does that say? It's E to the power of I pi plus. Pi oh, so that means pi. minus one. So that means that E is. Two seconds. It's not um, possible. They're all impossible numbers. He is an impossible number. They are not all impossible numbers. 007, your chance for a bonus now. Um, are they all to do with the theory of relativity? They are not. They are all named after the mathematician Euler, the great mathematician who went blind in the 18th century but carried on publishing. We are looking at Euler's polyhedron formula at clue one, simply Euler's formula at clue two. That's Euler's number, the E there. It's roughly 2.718. And that's a, a rather beautiful equation at the end that combines, I think you were saying, naught, one, e, pi and i, mm. Mm. with sort of beautiful simplicity. All named after the mathematician Euler. So no points there, but 007s, what would you like next? Two reads, please. Two reads. What would connect these random things? 
Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Um, nicknames given to monarchs? No, but that is a brilliant guess. Children files, do you know? We only had nicknames given to monarchs. <laughs> <laughs> no well, it's still not that. No. The dates relate to Bibles that were printed in those years with these oh. spelling mistakes. The parable of the vineyard in a 1717 Bible it was printed as the parable of the vinegar, so it was referred to as the vinegar Bible. Uh, in 1804, that's uh, the phrase, thy son shall come forth out of thy loins, but it was spelt come forth out of thy lions. <laughs> the wife hater Bible is slightly less fun one, it's just have is printed as hate, so there's sort of too much hate in there. And 1631, what do you think happened there? Uh, it's, um, they missed out the word not, so it, it said thou shalt commit adultery. Thou shalt commit adultery, exactly so, and the recalling and pulping and reprinting absolutely ruined uh, the publishers. Have you ever heard of the owl husband Bible? No. no. This is one where an expression about uh, women should be subject to their own husbands became subject to their owl husbands. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't use it as a clue because it might never have happened. There's no copies of that Bible, but people say that. Back to you, Chirophiles, for a choice. Uh, twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. This is going to be a picture question. What connects the things you're looking at? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. Again, nothing. Oh, no, carry on. Spotify is Danish or Norwegian. I don't know about that. Next, well. please. That's the beginning to have peas. Right? It's not, but it's not. It's straight, so they're all, they're all, they've all been straightened up. They, they're it's actually wrong. on the wall. Oh, that's true. Yes, you're right. Yeah. 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 Bob. Um, so they're things that are normally, as I just said, on the wonk, but have actually been straightened <laughs> up. <laughs> they are things that have been de-wonked. Very well done. <laughs> what are we looking at? Uh, so it's the flag at Iwo, Iwo Jima. That's right, raising the flag at Iwo Jima. Normally it's, it's on an yeah. incline. And then the logo of Spotify, mm -hmm. Burger King and the not leaning Tower of Pisa. Exactly so. Those logos would normally lean slightly to the right and the leaning Tower of Pisa, of course, Famously, if it didn't lean, it would have a different name. So that is just the Tower of Pisa you're looking at, actually, for straightened images. Well spotted. Back to you, 007s, for a choice. I have Horus, please. I have Horus. You win the 50-50. It's not the music question. <laughs> what connects these clues? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Yeah. Uh, next, please. Oh. Um, these are all people who have sold their soul to the devil for these particular things. Exactly so. Who do you think would have been at clue four? Uh, Faust. The man himself, Faust, for knowledge. What can you tell me about these clues? Robert Johnson was a um, blues guitarist who allegedly, supposedly, met the devil at a crossroads and sold his soul to play guitar. Exactly so. The, the question editors have asked me to make clear that this is an apocryphal story, <laughs> rather than lead people to believe that he actually met the devil and sold his soul. I don't know, he may have done, but let's be clear, not definitely. Uh, Jeanne is a character from the film Belladonna of Sadness, 1973 film, and she makes a similar pact with the devil. What do you know about Theophilus of Adana? Very little. <laughs> he was a real person, he was a bishop, and the story goes that he turned down the chance to be a bishop out of humility, but was then so jealous of the person that became bishop, but apparently had a falling out with that guy because he wouldn't even allow him to be an archdeacon, that he went to see <laughs> Satan and said, I've changed my mind, uh, I'd like to be a bishop, uh, although a bishop whose soul has been sold to Satan, which is a funny sort of bishop. <laughs> and Faust, of course, in the, the famous uh, Christopher Marlowe play. Well done. Chirophiles, you've lost the 50-50. It's the music question Yay. coming last. 
what connects the clues you're going to hear. First one coming in now. And happy forever. Speed it, sir. Next, please. That's turning into the side. Yes, it is. Yes. Next, please. He's gonna get caught. Just you wait and see. Why is everybody always picking on me? Oh, that's the... Okay, I'm gonna go next, please. What was the journey, Mitchell? Anything. Two seconds. They've got two word names and they've both got this. Oh no, it's Holy Moly is the other one, isn't it? So they're rhyming, rhyming. They're rhyming titles. They're rhyming titles. I'm afraid they are not rhyming okay. titles. 007s, would you like to go for a bonus point? Uh, Snoopy characters. They are characters in Snoopy or Peanuts. What did we hear? So the second one was Woodstock by mm. Joni Mitchell. That's right. And the third one was Charlie Brown. Coasters. Uh, not sure on the other ones. The fourth one was Snoopy and the Red Baron. Ah. Exactly so. And the first one, Sally, a song by Gracie Fields, Linus' sister Sally. Ooh, Peanuts characters. Well done for a bonus at the end there. And that means at the end of round one, the Chirophiles have two points, the 007s have three. <laughs> Sequence is time now, and 007s, you'll be going first again, so please choose a hieroglyph. Horned Viper, please. OK. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Uh, yeah, okay, that. Yeah, so it's someone who's Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Queen Anne, Arrow, Zero. Is an acceptable answer. We had George the Second Arrow, Zero. And why? Uh, because these are monarchs and the number of their children that went on to be monarch. Going down from three to one to zero. Absolutely right. It is monarchs and the number of children they had that became monarchs. Henry VIII had three children that became monarchs. George V, of course, Edward VIII and George VI. Queen Victoria had one child that became a monarch. That was... Edward the Seventh. Edward, Edward the Seventh. So, for the answer, any monarch who had no children becoming monarchs, for example, Queen Anne, George II, anybody like that, well done. Chirophiles, what would you like? Uh, lion, please. Lion, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Next, please. Oh, uh, I, I know I, what it is. I, I think it's, I know. Is it? Hang on. Yeah, I think so. I think it's so. Uh, first and 25. Isn't it? Yeah, okay, go for yeah, it. Go on. Uh, first colon 25. Is the right answer. Well done. Was it you that spotted that, Katie? Yeah. No, we both knew, yeah. I think. Oh, I could tell he knew, because he had that air of authority. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a very difficult question, because it, it demands deep lateral thinking. What is the sequence? It's how they've changed the scoring system for Formula One, and how it used to be that you got 10 for a first point and eight for the second, and then it's got over the years, it's changed. Exactly. We're going forward in time, and it's the points you get for where you finish in Formula One, and we're giving you four places at clue one, but going forward in time, three places at clue two, and so on. So at time of recording, if you just said what do you get for first place in Formula One, it would be 25 points. Well done. Back to you, 007s. What would you like? Twisted Flax, please. Twisted Flax. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Hail and Pace. Would be an acceptable answer. And why is that? Uh, so these are comedy acts um, with uh, fewer members as we go on. So 
uh, five members of the whitest kids you know, mm -hmm. four members of the Mary Whitehouse experience, mm -hmm. and so on, until we get to two for Hale and Pace. Exactly. Three people in the goodies. We had the two Ronnies at Clue 4. You said Hale and Pace. You could have said Mitchell and Webb, but, you know, don't worry about it. Say oh, Hale and Pace. No, it's so fine. Sorry. Say no, Hale and Pace. No, that's fine. You get the points. <laughs> Back to you, Chirophiles. What would you like? Uh, water, please. Water. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Oh, my legs. There's nothing there. No, go on, go on. Isn't it? It's the short shot. Isn't it the short shot? I don't just see the post over. Yeah, but, no, but, but please, maybe not. Next, please. Betty Davis. A good guess, but that's not it, I'm afraid. 007's, do you know? Grace Kelly. That's not it either. The answer is Raquel Welsh. These are sequentially on the wall of Andy Dufresne oh, in the Shawshank Redemption. They did say that. Did you say yeah. that? They said the Shawshank Redemption at Rita Hayworth because yeah, the original yeah. short story is called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Oh, I'd have been so yeah. impressed. Peter and, and Benny just they're, names they're graffitied, graffitied on, the wall. on there, and then successive posters: Rita yeah. Hayworth, Marilyn Monroe, and then Raquel Welsh. Yeah. Oh, it's even more frustrating as they're yeah. in your hands. <laughs> What would you like next, 007s? Uh, two reads, please. Two reads. What would come forth in this picture sequence? Here's the first. Um, I'm so excited. So it's in the Caribbean. So it's somewhere. Um, oh, it's the control deaf front on. Uh, next, please. Crikey. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Is it coming out? Is it a new Next, please. Two seconds. Jamaica. Not it, I'm afraid. Chirophiles, do you know? Easter Island. Not it. It's Puerto Rico. Oh. Do you know what we're looking at? I think it's American, like parts of America that aren't anywhere near America. And like Guam is going to be one of them. Mm -hmm. That's the third one. Um, That's exactly it. American Samoa. They yeah, are unincorporated things. territories. American Samoa is actually the smallest and it's an order of size. Okay. It's, it's, it's not the least populous, but it's the physically smallest, so that'll be before we've even started. Okay. The first clue, which would be second, if you have it after American Samoa, is the US Virgin Islands, then we've got the Northern yeah. Mariana Islands, then Guam, and the next largest unincorporated American territory would be Puerto Rico. In 2017, Donald Trump said that he had met the president of the Virgin Islands. What was wrong with that statement? He is the... Is he the president? He is the president of the Virgin Islands. He actually met the governor. <laughs> he didn't realise he was himself the president. <laughs> I make no comment. Chirophiles, one question remains. It's the Eye of Horus. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, next, please. I don't know either. Next, keep going. please. D minus one, D minus one, but it doesn't. No, because this would be two B one. It's not that straightforward. Oh, it's for sure. Okay, so that would be. So it goes like that, like that. Is it something to do with chess? Two seconds. Uh, D, three, lowercase d, minus one. Not it, I'm afraid. A bonus chance for you, 007s? Uh, uppercase D, one, lowercase d, two. Not it. It's uppercase D, one, lowercase d, one. It is about their enclosed areas. <sighs> How many do they have? Oh. There is one enclosed area in an A, upper or lowercase, two in an uppercase B, but one in a lowercase B. None in a C of either size, and with D there's one, whether it's upper or lower case. It's enclosed areas. Can you tell me which is the only English football league team whose name contains no letters that can be filled in? Hull City. It is Hull City. 
Oh, how quick with the answer this time. <laughs> yeah, when it's no use. <laughs> <laughs> that means at the end of round two, the Jurophiles have four points, the 007s have eight. Time for a semi-final connecting wall and Jurophiles. It'll be you to go first this time. So please choose lion or water. A uh, lion, please. Lion. You have two and a half minutes to solve this wall, starting now. Romano, is, is that a lettuce? Yeah, OK. Chardon Freude? No, that's Chardon. Shader. I don't know what that is. Okay. Just really... Uh, there's Israel oh, and Chad inside those oh. two. Uh, there's Oman inside that one. Oh. Okay. Samoa. Yeah, well done, then. OK, there's also Prime Ministers, possibly. OK, May, so May Eden Peel. and Brown. Oh, there's Matt, uh, well, sorry, yeah. If, you know, if you go for Heath, what about Heath? Okay. Oh, sorry, yeah. There's a Heath as well. Yeah, there's Heath. Oh, gosh, well, we'd better let's just keep looking it's at other a, things then, and uh, I will try. Islands, Christmas Island, Fire Island, possibly? Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe not. There's too many with six to cycle. Let's not worry about those. So okay. Damien Lewis. Is there Lewis's? Fire, May Lewis. Heath. Ledger, oh, they, I think dragon, uh, Abraham. What were you going to say? I was going to say they're Chinese zodiac signs. There's a horse, a dragon. I know, because it's not fire, is it? They're all animals. No. no. Okay. OK, not that. OK. Um, Should we go for Christmas Island? Go for There's it. no islands. What was it? Fire Christmas Island? Island? Dragon Island. I don't know. OK, and one of them? Horse Island? Yeah. Fine. OK. <laughs> okay. Um, Heath, Brown, Major. Let's just see. Christmas cake, fire cake. Firecracker, Christmas cracker. Yeah. Uh, is it no. dragon cracker? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is the horse Able. strike, horse cracker, no. dragonfly, horsefly, firefly, mayfly. <laughs> right, three okay. lives now. Okay. So there is, there's definitely got to be one of those as prime ministers. Yep. Okay. Okay. Let's go to peel. There's Eden peel. I, I don't like. That. I like major in there. So like, we're looking at Damien Abraham, Abraham and Christmas. Christmas. We've not got long left. Should let's I just take major off it? then. Okay. Go Damien. Okay. So let's go Damien, Abraham, Christmas, and then two. Okay, Peel. so we can't do major because that was with them last time, so. One second. Okay. One. Uh, I'm going to go for brown. Okay. Oh, that's well it. You've solved the wall with your last life. It, Very well done. What about the connections? Tell me about the first group starting Sharda. Great. Uh, so they all have a country hidden in the, if you take the first and the last letters off there. So you've got Chad, Oman, Israel and Samoa. That's right. And the next group, dragon, fire and so on. Uh, they, they're flies. Dragon they fly. are the flies. Yeah. Yeah. And the next group, Damien, Brown, Abraham and so Father. on. They Father. are fathers. Father Damien from Mrs Brown's boys. Father Smurfs. Abraham and the Smurfs, yeah. Father Christmas Gorse and uh, uh, Father Brown from the books of G.K. Chesterton. And the last group, Major Peel, Eden Heath. Uh, British Prime Ministers. They are the Prime Ministers. So at the last minute, you have scored the maximum of ten points. Let's bring back the other team now, give them the other connecting wall and see how they get on. Welcome back, 007s. So you have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall, starting now. Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy. Miss Selfridge, yeah. Miss Word. Salisbury, New Amsterdam, Bombay. Bombay yeah, yeah could be. Go with that. Okay. Okay. Three lives now, I'm plenty thinking, of time. Yeah. Um, trees with additional letters. Maple, Maple yes. palm, poplar, poplar and, and one other. And gum, is that a tree? It gum could be tree. gum tree. Gum yeah. tree. Yeah. 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 So gum. Maple, poplar, okay. palm tree would leave yeah. us with yeah. sweet, a oh, dream, dream, no, sweet, sweet electric, dreams. Sweet electric dreams. dreams, hoop dreams, hoop dreams, hoop dreams. together with electric dreams. dreams. Bombay dreams. It sounds like a Hollywood film or something, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Okay. So, the so chest, let's check there isn't another one. Another could be a tree. tree. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think so. there is. Well, let's let's go try it. it. So we've yeah. got time to yeah. in case it's not right. That's it, you've solved the wall. You made it look easy. <laughs> but maybe you solved it by mistake, let's find out. What can you tell me about the first group, Piggy, World, Selfridge and so on? Um, you can put Miss before all of these. You absolutely can. And the next green group, what do they have in common? Uh, they are former names of uh, cities. Yes, they are. What are those cities now? Uh, Tokyo, Harare, mm -hmm. is it? Um, New York and Istanbul. Yes, that's right. And the next group, Popular, Marple and so on? 
Uh, these are trees with one letter added. Yes, very well done. That's exactly the kind of group that people <laughs> never spot. Uh, you did really well there. And the last group, sweet, electric and so on. You can put dreams after these. Yes, you can. You didn't know Bombay Dreams. It was a West End musical with a sort of Bollywood theme. Okay. Uh, Mira Sayal wrote the book, I think, okay. Bombay Dreams. So an easy score <laughs> of ten points. Let's have a look at what we've got overall. The Chirophiles have 14 points. The 007s have 18 points. So a couple of perfect walls from these brilliant semi-finalists. The place in the final will be decided in the missing vowels round. Fingers on buzzers teams. I can tell you that the first group all carry batons. I'll start you off. A riot policeman. Next who? 007s? Sir Simon Rattle. The conductor. Well done. Chirophiles? French Baker. Correct. 007s? Chris Akabusi. The relay runner. Next category, animal, vegetable, mineral. 007s? Aardvark, carrot, gypsum. Well done. 007s? Chimpanzee, cauliflower, bauxite. Brilliant. <laughs> Chirophiles. Dog, courgette, quartz. Well, of course it is. <laughs> 007s. Meerkat, radish, opal. Saving the obvious one till last. Next category, names of emojis. Chirophiles. Thinking face. Correct. Chirophiles. Face screaming in fear? Yes, it is. That one is See No Evil Monkey. And with Katie's face screaming in fear, I think I've got my new ringtone. But after an excellent round four, I can tell you that the winners and through to the final with 23 points, it's the 007s. Excellent on the animal, vegetable, mineral. Very well done. Thank you. And a very honourable second place with 18, it's the Chirophiles. An absolutely brilliant team. I'm delighted to say you're through to my favourite round of the series, <laughs> the third place playoffs. Very well deserved. Not to say the final wouldn't have been as well. Very well played. See you next time and we will see you in the final. Thank you for watching. And coming up next on BBC Two, it's a new antiques programme. I know people say there are too many of those already, but this is a really exciting new format in which the always wonderful Michael Portillo, of whom long-term viewers know I am genuinely a big fan, drives around the country with several giant chests stuffed with artefacts that may be hugely valuable or, on closer inspection, totally worthless. Teams have two hours to work it out. That's taking a good long look inside Michael's trunks, next on BBC Two.